What's going on everybody? Welcome to a very different episode of Driven Hard. Um, today I'm out at uh, Stave Lake here in Mission, BC. And um, excuse the noise, we've got some kids having some fun on some quads. But uh, I have a loaner vehicle and uh, you can see I am not by myself today. I have my son who's chilling in there. Um, but I figured it'd be a really cool opportunity to do a quick, um, I don't want to call it a review, but I do want to call it my thoughts on the uh, 2020 Discovery Sport. So if you can get by the outside noise we're going to have and uh, whatever distractions RAF is going to uh, do inside uh, the vehicle, um, let's have some fun. And then you know, you know, I'm going to try taking it up, up and down a couple of the light duty trails here because let's admit it, it's a soft rotor. This is not an off rotor. This is a soft rotor by all means. But uh, I want to give you my thoughts and opinions on this. Um, I've had it for the last few days. Uh, the Driven Heart Range Rover is back at the dealership getting an emergency repair done. More on that in a future video. But um, let's talk about this. So this is the 2020 uh, Discovery Sport. Um, this is the R Dynamic, which is not as exciting as it sounds. You get some fancy trim, um, some deviated stitching. Um, this is the smaller of the two engines. And as I was doing my research for this video, I learned that the higher engine, I believe it's the P290, um, I'll put the correct name of it inside the stats, is about $3,000 more and it only gives you about 40 horsepower more. Um, so not a lot of bang for your buck for uh, this little four cylinder engine that you get with it. But let me go inside and give you some of my first initial thoughts um, of what this thing is like. Hey, buddy, do you like this thing? Do you like the vehicle? What? You do, okay, Raf approves of it. So let's, let's get inside and I'll give you some of my thoughts. All right, so let me give you some of my thoughts um, with the inside, kind of walk you through. So you do have the same uh, infotainment type of system that is in, um, you know, the Range Rover and, uh, you know, the large Discovery, pretty much uh, all Land, Land Rover and Jaguar products. Um, so let's get into the things that you guys want to see. In order to go through the different drive modes, what you actually do is you're gonna press this button here and then this um, switch toggles and allows you to go through. Uh, it gives you the, I wonder if it shows it on the main screen. I think it only shows it over here. Uh, your eco mode, your comfort, um, auto train response. Uh, then it has grass, gravel, snow, mud ruts, and sand. Um, there is no low range, so it's not going to have rock crawl or anything like this. It doesn't even have any locking diffs on it. Um, you can go here for a bit more off-road information on the main thing. And it's just showing you where it's sending power and which wheels are going to be slipping. I'll give you a bit more details of this in action when we go for a quick little drive here in a little bit. Uh, let me put that back to auto before I forget. You get your typical slope and pitch, Thank compass, you. and of course, you know, okay. what's for what. It's not scary, sweetie. <laughs> They're just getting some motorcycles out. Right? You can see here the deviated stitching that kind of matches the exterior. I really like that. I think it gives the interior a nice little uh, touch, just like, I like that. I kind of wish the Range Rover had that. Um, it's kind of a cool thing. Um, in terms of the rest of the uh, entertainment system or infotainment system, it's the exact same, like I said, that's pretty much across the board for the JRL, JLR products. So I'm not gonna bother wasting your time going through all of this because it's really not exciting and it's kind of boring. Um, this is only equipped with one basic backup camera. And what I've noticed is the backup camera on this same with the jaguar the resolution on them just seems absolutely horrible so maybe if you don't equip your uh the backup or if you don't equip or buy the camera options you get basic low resolution cameras but uh yeah no it's absolutely horrible especially pulling into into the garage it just does not give you a very good view when you're backing up um at all Okay, another thing I want to 
point out is this bloody thing right here. Um, it has the clear sight rear view mirror. So right now it's pointing at the sky because the tailgate is up. We can fix that, can't we? There we go. Look at that. Now, personally, I think it's a gimmick. I guess it makes sense, but I think you have a ton. If I cut, cut it out of the way, you can see outside the back just fine. I don't think there's any need to have an actual uh, camera on there. I personally think it's a gimmicky thing. Yeah. Yeah, Raph agrees. Um, and I can't stand having that on when I'm driving. It's just, it's just a bit of a distraction more than anything here, so. Let's put it back there. Uh, it does have nice big uh, moonroof. No, it does not open, but man, does it make the cabin seem a lot larger than it actually is for such a small vehicle. Um, I've really come to appreciate that. Um, another little storage cool thing here is we open this up, this entire thing actually pops right off. So you can have a boatload of front storage right there. And there's even a cover uh, if you don't want cup holders here and you just want a cover, uh, you can do that as well. So lots of storage, it's kind of cool. Wireless charger, um, eh, it's pretty slow, but uh, it is what it is. <sighs> what else is there? Okay, so let's talk about the fit and finish. <laughs> Um, there is being a rattle that, or a vibration of something from the dash. I can't figure out what it is, but I got a video of it and I'll slice it in here. And the rattle is just the most annoying thing in the world. This thing only has 8,000 kilometers and um, it's just maybe, maybe that's, that's just what it takes, you know, but it's just, uh, you guys tell me how annoying this rattle is. Right. But once again, you know, the people who are buying this, maybe they're just, they're not big into cars. They don't really care a lot about, uh, you know, fit and finish refinement or anything like that. Even though they are buying a uh, Land Rover product, they do buy some of that name, but this is not by any means an actual quote unquote Land Rover. This is not one of the ones that they build their brand around. Um, this vehicle is something that simply helps you know, pad their bottom line to turn a profit uh, when they start selling these type of low-end uh, entry-level products like uh, the Discover Sport, like the Evoque, um, you know, like those, I want to say, quote-unquote, cheaper products. This thing fully loaded is still $60,000. Uh, that's Canadian, but 60 grand Canadian can get you into a pretty nicely equipped Jeep Grand Cherokee where the fit and finish is going to be light years above this basic plastic stuff. Um, you're going to have a full low range gearbox and you're going to have a longer wheelbase, which is going to give you a much nicer ride because this thing just going up and down these four service roads is not comfortable at all. Definitely doing reviews with him is a little challenging. I know you're hungry. We're gonna go eat after. We gotta finish this video. Should we go for a drive? Should we go for a drive now? Bumpy? Let's just go do that. In this little test, you're gonna see the lack of ground clearance. What? Um, you'll get to see a bit of a, the four wheel drive system works. Uh, let me just make sure we're on the right screen for that. All right, buddy, grab a seat. But um, as I do this, you can, well, you'll kind of see for itself how it likes to, oh, and so we're in auto. What I'll do is I'll actually put it to mud ruts. And yeah, let's just go for it. All right, so we get some slippage. Yeah, Daddy just needs to concentrate for one second, buddy. I think we got a wheel in the air, right? I can feel it, we're rocking. Right? 
Now the front end is probably gonna brush. Yeah, you don't need your seatbelt. We're not going fast. You see that on the screen how the wheels are All right, remember no low range so you really got to give it some traction oh <laughs> for the wheels to to get going all right so as we go through this little thing having a low range would really help with the uh with the throttle control I've done this multiple times in the Range Rover and it's just so much easier when you're in low range. Um, this is smaller, so I don't hit as many as the branches. Um, but um, you're gonna start to see where the ground gets a little uneven. This thing really kind of does struggle and it just, it gets it done, but it does not like it. That's the best way I could kind of explain it. You don't like it either. Yeah. I know, sweetie. I don't like it. I don't really like not having my cameras, so I can't really see where I'm putting my wheels with these rocks. Which is always kind of a... pain. But she does it as graciously as it could be done. Nope. But she does get it done. I would like to see if I can climb up that. That was a little impressive. I did not think it was gonna actually get up that on these pretty much street tires. What did it look like on the on the video? Oh, you, did it kind of look a little? You, your left front tire came right up. Oh, really? It did not I look comfortable it. at all, right? No, it looks yeah. like it's so out of place. I almost missed a shot because I was sitting there like, uh. That's awesome, man. That'll be a great video. So cool. All right. So that was pretty cool. I did not expect. Um, it to actually crawl up that uh, that little slope there. I do wish it wasn't a Sunday afternoon and the weather was not so nice um, because then this place wouldn't be so busy. Um, and there are a few more uh, trails or obstacles rather that I would like to try to kind of test this thing on because that actually really impressed me back then. Um, so hopefully the video, I haven't seen the video yet, but hopefully it, it, it kind of shows uh, um, just what this thing is capable of. So. You know, my kind of last few thoughts on this thing um, is this. It's capable off-road. It's gonna get whoever buys this type of car. It's like a useless as a car, useless as an SUV. I don't, these crossovers, I can't stand them. But the people who buy them, they're never gonna get themselves in a situation that they cannot get out of because of the sophistication of the all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive system. No, nope, an all-wheel drive system because you can't really, yeah, let's just leave it at that. Um, of the uh, traction controls and all of that, it's gonna be completely fine for pretty much 99.9% .9 of the people who, who do get these. The people who do buy them because they want an off-roader, are they gonna be a little disappointed? Probably not because people who want an off-roader and they buy this are not people who understand what off-roading is. So they're gonna be just fine um, jumping the occasional curb, going around, 
um, you know, city snow and, and stuff like that. Taking it out to a place like this, um, where, you know, the Jeepers and the mud bloggers and everyone comes and the idiots with Range Rovers come, um, you know, this thing will quickly become overwhelmed with um, everything that you can put it through its paces here. But, you know, all in all, this is definitely not my cup of tea, but it does impress me. This thing does impress me when you do get it off-road. It's smart, it's intelligent enough to throw around power to get it through what it shouldn't really be able to get through. Um, I don't like reviewing cars, but I would love to take a Toyota RAV4 up that, uh, the TRD one, um, or whatever the else this thing competes with, and just see, could it get through something like that? Um, you know what, who knows? Maybe I'll end up at a Toyota dealership and grab one of their vehicles. We'll see, probably not, because then I gotta be driving that thing around, but I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. But uh, hey guys, if you enjoyed this, let me know. If you didn't, let me know. Um, hopefully the video turned out the way uh, I intended it to. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you're brand new. I'm a Mecca. Um, that's Raf. Once again, sorry about the distractions for this video, but hey, Dad Duty's call, and you still gotta produce the videos for you guys. So uh, until next time, everybody, drive hard.